It's time for the Sunday Scrum here on CBC News Network, and we begin with a battle against extremist violence on two fronts. The first front is abroad, with Canada's new defence minister hinting this week at an expanded mission against ISIS, possibly into Syria and Libya. The second front is here at home, with new anti-terror legislation being debated in the House of Commons. The politicians had their say. Now we'll have ours. Susan Riley is a freelance columnist in Ottawa. With her there is the CBC's own Rosemary Barton, and joining us from Montreal is Martin Patrick Quinn with Maclean's Magazine. And as yeah. always, tweet me your thoughts at Andrew CBC. So, Rosie, first of all, let's talk about this news about uh, Al Shabab making specific reference to uh, the West uh, Edmonton Mall. Has there been any reaction from Ottawa? I know it's early on a Sunday morning, and this has just happened. But any reaction, or if there hasn't been, what can we expect to hear from from the government on this? Well, I did check uh, all the ministers' Twitter feeds there because that's usually where the first reaction comes, and there hasn't been any from the government yet. I think that they will uh, do what what they have typically done in these situations. They will try and tell Canadians that there is no imminent attack because it doesn't sound like that. These are um, threats um, from someone who is, uh, you know, choosing to keep their face covered, and and they're making the threats online. But they will also, uh, I would imagine, highlight that this is exactly, exactly. what the government mm -hmm. has been trying <laughs> yeah. to call Canadians' attention to, whether it be fighting uh, ISIS in Iraq, whether it be now this suggestion uh, by Jason Kenney that that fight may have to head into Libya, where ISIS is moving because of the instability in Libya. And, and then there would, un, you know, undoubtedly be some sort of mention of the anti-terror bill, which, which is, uh, of course, the, the mm -hmm. hot political topic here right now. All right, so let's get to the anti-terror bill in a section. But let's talk a little bit about uh, Jason Kenney and what he said to Evan Solomon yesterday on the House, in which he kind of did hint that maybe there would be a role for Canada's mission against ISIS in uh, Syria. Susan, what's your sense of that? Do you think, I know right now that there is public support for the mission against ISIS, but do you think that support is going to continue into maybe into Syria into Libya Yes, I don't think these are distinctions that are going to weigh heavily in the public mind. And I think this is possibly the most unsurprising news since, you know, Stephen Harper declared war, the war on terror. I mean, it's it's kind of predictable that this is the way it would go. Um, furthermore, we it's very unclear at this point what exactly Canada will do. Canada's got limited resources. Um, Mr. Harper, for all his warlike rhetoric, has got a very close eye on the on the deficit and on the budget. He doesn't want a deficit. Um, so I don't think we're going to see a huge allocation of new funds to the Canadian military. Furthermore, this is a multinational effort, so Canada will fit in, plug in wherever we mm -hmm. can be useful, I guess. So I don't know if it really is a big news story in any sense. You know what's interesting to me, uh, and, and Marty, maybe you can talk about this. I grew up in Montreal. Montreal has yeah. always been more pacifist, has always sort of not been on board with Canadian, the rest of the country when it comes to these wars or these missions. But this time, Quebecers seem to be equally, if not in some cases, even more supportive. More. What's going on? Uh, you know, it's, it's interesting you say that. I was looking at clippings last Friday about uh, the Iraq war in 2001, and it was exactly that. You know, Montreal had the biggest protest, uh, one of the biggest protests in North America uh, against the Iraq war, uh, very much against the mission in Afghanistan. You know, uh, the fact that we didn't go into Iraq was probably uh, saved Jean Chrétien's bacon back in the day. I think what you're seeing here is a little bit of uh, sort of two things. The, the Charlie Hebdo attacks mm -hmm. had a huge amount of residents here. Uh, it's actually three things. Secondly, the reasonable accommodations debate has been raging here since 2007. Um, you know, it's been dormant at times, but it's still, it's still there. Thir uh, thirdly, the whole question of, uh, you know, uh, uh, the kneecaps and, and the wearing, the wearing of these, these kinds of things. Everybody said that the security issue of the fact that the two people that committed the acts in, uh, against in Ottawa and saint jean sur le year were both from Quebec. Now, I think that all has something to do with it. And, uh, and again, as you say, you know, Tom Mulcair is, is, uh, is, uh, still, is still very much against Bill, F Bill C-51, and I think that's very, very important. I think it's, I'm glad that he's doing that. I'm, whether he's doing it on principle or mis political miscalculation, I'm not sure, but I think, I think, rea I think being mm -hmm. against this is very important. Uh, I'm just not sure it's not going to benefit him uh, politically next time. All right, well, let's, we'll move to C Bill C-51 in just a second, but one, the one last question on, on the mission, and that is the cost. Rosie, um, are you hearing anything about what the government is saying about the cost, especially as now we're hearing from Jason Kenney?
certainly musing about an expanded role. We're also hearing yesterday from uh, Ukraine's uh, former ambassador to Canada, who's mm -hmm. now the deputy foreign minister, saying, hey, uh, we'd like some Canadian weapons, maybe some training of troops, and maybe Ukraine is going to be in a full-scale war against Russia. Well, well, the estimates for the cost of the Iraq mission once they came out this week were about, you know, what the government had to do. The government suggested 120 million. The parliamentary budget officer said a little bit more than that. But I think Susan is right. The government cannot overextend itself, um, and these are costly. These are costly things to do. Mm -hmm. So, if if Stephen Harper and if the Conservatives are now trying to put a lot of their electoral eggs in the basket of terror and fighting terror and seem to be tough on terror, they have to be very careful that at the same time they are not uh, going to put themselves in, in a deficit position. And I think that that's a difficult one to balance. The Libya situation um, is ironic because, of course, we were there in 2011 yeah. bombing Libya. And, and the instability that was left behind in Libya is in large part, I think, why ISIS has moved into that region. If we see huh. that um, ISIS is starting to target Italy, as some reports are suggesting, then we get into a, a much broader uh, global fight, right, that will be UN mandated, NATO mandated, and Canada will have to play a role in some, to some extent. The Ukraine thing is, is problematic for all sorts of reasons. And again there, Canada is not going to move unless the U.S. is also moving in the direction of arming uh, the Ukrainian, uh, Ukrainian forces. But, it, it, you know, they, they may want to do all these things. But they can't do it at any cost mm -hmm. because we don't have it. And I would say that the public, in terms of public response and public opinion, um, people are obviously horrified, disgusted by the burnings and the beheadings and all these um, provocative acts that are calculated to make us feel disgust and are calculated to, to essentially stoke the flames of this war, this so-called war. Um, I think that Canadians are probably way more concerned about what might happen at the West Edmonton Mall uh, than what might happen mm -hmm. in Tripoli. And I think is, that that's... Yeah where the focus of the government security mm -hmm. should be. At the same time, I would really urge everybody to kind of tone down the rhetoric. Um, the more we exclaim and the more we set off alarms and the more there are press press conferences by the Minister of Defense in response to some lunatic with a video camera, um, the more we, mm. we kind of do exactly put, play out the, the part that they have assigned us, they the terrorists. Maybe that's you know? why we haven't yeah, heard from the ministers, or maybe yeah. it's just yeah, something and that would Maybe be, it, might, it might still be too early. <clears throat> right. Yeah. <laughs> it but might Marta, be too early. You but you get it? my point, though. Yeah. Like, by all means, you know, be alert and alert all the security people around the mm -hmm. mall, West Edmonton Mall. Let people know that there's been a threat. But mm -hmm. don't overreact. And this is the, the, go ahead, Marty. Sorry, this is yeah. the. I mean, we could be having this discussion 15 years ago with the, with you know with 9/11 and uh, mm -hmm. not overreacting, and and it's it's identical to it. You know, every mm -hmm. time something like this, like Al Shabaab comes out and says this, they give themselves instant credibility by yeah. to, doing essentially what we're doing and what politicians do, yeah. talking about it. Yeah. Uh, and Susan's completely right on the rhetoric, you know. Uh, thank goodness that, that Mr. Kenny hasn't said anything yet, but what the what the Homeland Security Director in the States said, like, that's, you know, just be careful, like, mm -hmm. going, to a, going to a mall. Yeah. Like, it that is, does not and help things. And it is interesting. Uh, I was just reading, you know, the RCMP in Nova Scotia is choosing not to name the suspects in the uh, alleged threat against the Halifax Shopping Centre for the exact reasons that, that you're all bringing up, and that just don't give them notoriety. Mm -hmm. Just so in their press releases, you actually don't see the suspect's name, which is interesting. All right, I know you're chomping at the bit to get to the debate on Bill C-51. There was certainly fire debate in the House of Commons yeah. uh, about B-51, C-51, known as the anti-terror bill. Here's some of that exchange. Why is the Prime Minister lumping in legitimate dissent with terrorist activities? Because as the NDP's positions on this issue become more and more irrelevant, more and more unconnected to Canadians' real concerns, their, their statements on the issue become more and more extreme. Of course, when he uses the word extreme to define the opposition, and then he denies that this is about political opportunism, everybody can see right through it. All right, so Marty, you were uh, saying earlier that yeah. you really applaud the NDP for taking this uh, stance. Why is that? Somebody has to. Uh, the Liberals rolled over and played dead pretty quickly when Bill C-51 was introduced, and I think it's the role of the official opposition to, to address some very, uh, very important 
you know, there's, there's things that are very scary in this. Like, you know, the, the, the carte blanche given to CSIS by, by way of a judge by saying that they can go in and seize anything by, at any time. Uh, the sharing of tax information and that sort of thing. It's scary stuff and it's, you know, at the, at the very least there should be some opposition to saying, hey, look, we, we can't do this. And the exact same thing happened in 2001 with Jean Chrétien. Uh, that said, as I, as I said before, you know, uh, uh, Tom Mulcair's political base is in Quebec, and normally you would think that the Quebec population would be in lockstep with that sort of position, but it's completely, the, 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 it's changed. The, 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 the way that Quebecers are reacting now, it, it seems like they're reacting out of fear, and they're more in lockstep, I would argue, with the Conservatives, oddly enough. Um, you know, what, I, what I'm wondering about, uh, and maybe, Susan, you can talk about this, is that with this lack of oversight, and there were four prime ministers, uh, I believe, that signed a letter along with many other Canadians saying that uh, there needs to be proper oversight. It was, uh, was it Joe Clark, Jean Chrétien, Paul Martin, and John Turner? Uh, so they're all saying there needs to be this proper oversight. Um, why is it, Susan, do you think that the government is reluctant to have that? Aucune idée. I mean, who knows, really? It's very hard to say. I think um, it's, I just think the whole thing is really too bad because there are sensible elements in this bill, uh, sharing information and closer coordination among the different security agencies for one, yep. even that's preventative true. arrests being extended, you know, from three days to seven. That's not, not so horrendous if you think you've got, a, a, you know, a bat, you know, evildoer on your hands or something. Um, but there are other parts that, and I think the more it's examined by people and the more publicity and the more, um, the more people like Thomas Mulcair uh, make arguments, uh, I, I wonder if, if the solid support for this legislation is going to hold. The most sinister part to me is um, how broadly defined um, terrorism is. Like any any uh, group or individual that up, that threatens the economic or financial stability of Canada or that attacks critical infrastructure. Elizabeth May has been saying that could include environmentalists. You think, oh, we're in tinfoil hat territory. Of course uh -huh. they're not going to do that. And then we have this leaked RCMP, internal RCMP report, uh, which, which talks about this sinister anti-petroleum movement, mm -hmm. right? And uh, and conflates um, peaceful activists with uh, with, with the, the some impended yeah exactly yeah. so I mean it it's worrisome that suggests you know an official mindset within the police or perhaps not official but a mindset within the RCMP that ra it, it certainly prodded me awake I, mm -hmm. I was a little more sanguine about the bill but I thought whoa if this is what they really think who knows how they would use this new tool and the, 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 yeah mm -hmm. I, the problem is is that the bill uh, completely changes the role of CSIS it it, it 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 makes it much more expansive it gives it uh, the job of disrupting potential threats and that can mean you know anything from cutting off someone's cell phone to going to talk to their family to stopping them from traveling and people might be comfortable with all those things if it's an alleged terrorist. But the problem is, is that there is effectively no oversight. You can't put a huge piece of legislation in front of Parliament, expand the role of Canada's spies, and do nothing more about the oversight. CERC, as Chris Hall reported on Friday, is made up of 14 people and four board members. The yeah. budget has not changed since the Conservatives came into power. So this is a very small group of people who are effectively only reviewing what CSIS does. And the government's argument is, well, judges will handle that because they will, the one, they will be the ones giving out um, the permission for CSIS to do things. But is that really oversight? Because mm -hmm. will the judges really go back and make sure that CSIS did what they were supposed to do? I'm not sure. What did you think of, what did you think of uh, the leader of the opposition, Tom Mulcair, saying, you know, you could go after political opponents? We heard, you know, the prime minister seemed to dismiss this as just, you know, conspiracy theories. But uh, Marty, did you think that that was, uh, what, did you th what did you make of that when he said that? Uh, you know, I, I think Susan just made ref reference to tinfoil hat territory until you actually, <laughs> you actually, you actually think about it. Look, uh, yeah. Tommy Douglas was under surveillance by uh, the uh, by the RCMP uh, spy uh, section, but before ceases, of course, as well before ceases. It's not impossible. Nothing's impossible when you give people that much uh, that much power. And and again, Rosie's point was very good. Security Intelligence Review Committee. There is no oversight. These people review what CSIS has done in yeah, the rearview mirror. Yeah, they write an mirror. annual report. They write an annual report once written by Arthur Porter. Mm -hmm. Oddly enough. <coughs> um, <laughs> Uh, you know, so the states has all sorts of problems with with oversight and that kind of thing, of course. But the fact is, is that uh, security uh, uh, officials in the states are hauled in front of Congress and actually 
talked and, mm -hmm. and overse overseen mm -hmm. during as the process is going on. And yeah. I don't see why you could possibly be against that. Something that Peter McKay was for, actually.